Welcome to the Sly Gittins Technify channel and in today's video we're going to be discussing the Microsoft 365 admin portal and how you can get the most out of it. So make sure to watch this video to the end. Knowledge is First thing we need to do is go to admin.microsoft.com and once we get here you're going to be presented with the admin portal right and you have the dashboard page and this dashboard page is very functional and useful time to time when you go through certain dashboard pages in most products or some products the dashboard doesn't really that help you you got to really dig deep to to gather to gather the information you want but Microsoft made it um, easy enough to understand and gave me enough ability to customize it then it's pretty satisfying you can search for terms here we can add different cards so if I wanted to add like set up Azure Active Directory. I can just click this plus sign and add it there. GDPR, you might not be able to see that because my head is probably blocking it. You know my love affection for puppies, so I had to put them in the video. Let's get back to it. The next thing you can do is change between dark mode and light mode, and all that does is change the background. And you also can see what's new in the product, so you can stay up to date on the changes because this thing changes daily, if not weekly, sometimes. Um, and you just want to be aware of what's new. Cool thing, if you're brand new to Microsoft and you needed some step-by-step -step help, this is a good place to get started with because it tells you to install applications, like Word. Then you can also in connect your um, domain account, connect your um, users, you know, and then you can also even share some of your Microsoft Teams, you know, and activate that within this quick setup. There's also some additional setups that you can leverage, like advanced setup right here. Uh, which is also pretty cool. So let's go back to that main page. Don't go. Keep watching the video. Now you can proceed to the regular schedule program. So let's take a look at some of the different actual tiles that you have. So you have remote, remote workers with teams. So learn how to manage teams for remote workers with setup and guidance. So this is going to walk you through how to leverage that and set up teams. You can leverage the user management functionality, add, edit, and remove users from your active, Azure Active Directory. And then also it gives you that ability again to install those desktop applications, billing, we have service health, we have training, we have Office 365 advanced threat protection. And the great thing is all of these little blocks are customizable so you can put them anywhere. Now I know you're still enjoying this video if you hear this along, so keep watching it because it gets better. And I know that might be surprising, but it definitely does. So stay tuned. Next thing, let's go straight into the user plane and go take a look at active users. Active users are what exactly what the name says, right? These are users that actually actively been authenticated a, um, to a resource or being validated through Azure Active Directory for MFA. Um, the great thing about it, you can add users here. They got user templates, add multiple users, multi-factor authentication, delete user, refresh, um, reset password, export users. So Microsoft gives you a lot of functionality within this active tab. If you go to contacts, you also can see some other contacts that we have in there as well. Then we got guest users that we can leverage. So if you wanted someone from Gmail, Hotmail, and you're working with a marketer and they don't have a business email, you can use this feature here. Um, you can also delete users whenever you want. So that's a pretty cool feature. And then the next area we have is groups. And groups are great because you can centralize a, a group of people and able to extend policies to those groups within that area, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, within that, they got some different membership types that we will get to in the next video. But again, you can do a couple of those things here. One thing to point out on most pages inside of the header, you're going to see a hyperlink to learn more about that particular session. I highly recommend diving a little bit deeper into this. Um, you can delete the groups that you created, so that would be here if we deleted anything. You can also share groups or make it shareable with or other organizations or within your company by clicking this button. Um, next thing is billing. Um, this is a pretty important thing for especially resellers of Microsoft and also for end customers is you got a fixed budget. Now you can plan it out like, you know what, I currently have Microsoft 365 E5. Maybe let's consider E3. What do I be losing and how can I you know, ensure that I maximize my productivity, right? So that's something you can do, at least start thinking about that while you're viewing that page. Then you can see different products or benefits that I subscribe to. So you can see here that I'm using a free license of Enterprise Mobility Security Suite E5. This video is too good to keep to yourself. So share it with some friends. So let's go take a look at licenses. And this is where you just find all the different product 
licenses that you have in the environment. You can see mine. I have a few different ones. You can see the available licenses, how much I have available to distribute, or if I need to buy some more. And this is kind of what you're going to see here. The next few other areas is all about bills, um, invoice, payment methods. You can do those here. You can see different billing accounts. You can see, again, like the payment methods that we talked about, billing notifications. If you're a Microsoft partner, you're probably not going to be using this page because you're using cloud service provider to do your buildings and transactions. But for those individuals are that's doing it for themselves, this is what they're going to be seeing here. Right? And these are the people inside of my demo account that receives notifications. So make sure the right people are selected here. Next piece is the setup page, right? So we saw like we can go through a setup page in the beginning. This is like a little bit more of a detail page of different things you can do to add to get started with an Office 365 to secure your environment and into some of the things that you can activate, right? So you can see stuff of policy and compliance, data migration, apps and updates, security sign on information. So it all has to be located here. Hey, comment below, guys, and keep watching this video. Another piece that you're going to spend some time in is might be support, right? Adding a new service request. You can view different service requests, right? So you got a few different things that you can do here. Customer lockbox requests. You can make sure if you're going into, uh, you know, into your settings, you can activate if you want an actual Microsoft rep to be able to automatically log in there. You could block it and have them request, which I recommend you doing. Um, you can see the different lockbox requests that you have in there. Domains. So you can add a domain here if you don't go through the quick setup page or after that you want to either buy a domain or add a one here. Microsoft Search. You can see some different um, search functionality here. Um, your organization settings. So you can take a look and dive into you know, do you want to activate Azure Suite services, email, directory synchronization, groups, forms, Microsoft Pro, Microsoft Analytics, news. There's so many things that you can configure here. We don't have enough time to go in there because it'd be like a 20 minute video and nobody wants that, right? So you could do password expiry policies, right? Set a password policy for organizations. And could you do these in other places like Active Directory? Yeah. Uh, but right here, they got it all in one area where you can just get started in doing that, right? You can actually configure like the different color like the, of your themes if you want to make sure it matches your your logo and your branding for your organization. Help def information, data location, or right? you want to see you can see all my data resides inside the United States, right? Uh, release preferences, right? So you can go in here and do some things like target releases for everyone, standard release, depending on your organization. And if you can tolerate downtime, maybe you don't want to do that, right? Maybe you don't need that, right? So you can use these features here. Uh, some other cool things you can go and do is you got reports. And as it names, you can see your productivity score. Um, if you sign up, right? It's currently right now, that's in a private preview. So you can join now to see if you want to see that. You can see different usage from active users. You can see in my demo account, only, you know, no one has been active, right? And then you can go to security and compliance, but it's actually a better page for that because go to the security and compliance, um, this admin page, which is also kind of a little bit better. You take a lot of service help, so you can see if there are any advisories, if anything is going to be down, so you can plan accordingly any you know, if you want to report issues, histories, and so on and so forth. It's about to go down. Um, my area where I spend a lot of time is, is obviously the security page. So this is everything in security. And I'm going to do a video just on going through the security page, things you used to activate and not. Just want to show you that you can get that from here. Compliance settings, right? Do you want, do, is your current tenant and your current uh, environment set up to meet certain compliances if you need to. You can see what's your compliance score. Like in a, this is similar to the secure score that I talked about with your security center within your in, uh, organization using a tool, but now this is, you know, just tracking your compliance depending on what you need to use, right? So you can definitely use that. And again, I'll make a video that's going straight over compliance page. Um, the next one, Endpoint Manager or Intune in tune with your endpoint security if you want to use that you can get to that page exchange sharepoint teams and yeah there's more there's even other things like azure atp power bi power apps microsoft defender atp you're getting a point 
right? This is your one place to get access to all your different pages. I do recommend saving some of the portals that you use the most. I have a few of mine here, but you can set it up however you want. You can even customize how you want to see inside a uh, navigation portal. What do you want to see, you know, further up? Uh, you can have that as well, right? So it's a great thing. I didn't want to spend too much more time on this. So keep watching the other videos in my channel. Um, the great thing is you can go take a look at my secure score to see how you can improve your security posture within your Office 365 environment. If you're a student and you are wondering where some cloud tip, I mean some college tips, um, I have a video that I released about two weeks ago where you can go take a look at some of the two tips I find out. So keep the learning going. It doesn't have to stop here. But again, thank you for your time. And Sly Gittins is out.